Hello everyone, welcome to the Belt and Road face to face. So the Chinese vaccine uh, is effective not only for COVID-19, but also effective for uh, other varieties of uh, virus. Out of those nine, five are from China. We have divided the population into three groups. It's not should be like um, for, uh, for all people in one, some countries, it should be like in all countries for some people so that everybody can get the benefit of that. Hello everyone, welcome to the Belt and Road face-to-face. -face. Our program is co-produced by China Economic Net and Vash News Television. I'm Wang Xiaotong from China Economic Net. Today, I'm pleased to be joined in our studio by Cheng Xizhong, who is visiting professor at Southwest University of Political Science and Law and former defense attache in South Asia. And we also have Dr. Muhammad Farag Salim Han, who is assistant professor at Yibin University, China. Let's enter the first part, hotspot. As the epidemic continues to spread around the world, coronavirus vaccination programs have been developed in various countries. The World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has said that a WHO team in China is working with producers of the Sinovac and the Sinopharm vaccines for potential emergency use listings. Iqbal, 43-year-old Pakistani guy in Shanghai, received his second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine in Shanghai. He is also the first Pakistani to receive a Chinese medicine vaccine in China. Suggest if the people are giving opportunity, you should take it, you should avail it because uh, there's nothing to worry, there's nothing to scare this one because at the end, it's, it's, it's good for our body, it's going to help us to uh, you know, boost our immune system. And the vaccination we got, you know, it is from uh, a company based in Beijing and it was free. So I think in the future, Pakistan government and Chinese government working on that. And uh, in a couple of weeks, if any one of you back at home in Pakistan get this opportunity, so you should guys avail it. I hope everybody will stay healthy and all the best in 2021. Thank you. Ms. Chen, how safe is the COVID-19 vaccine now? China attaches uh, uh, great importance, uh, much attention to the development of vaccine. Since the very beginning, the Chinese uh, government uh, uh, you know, started uh, the development job, and uh, we consider that is a strategic job. So up to now, uh, with much efforts, uh, uh, we have already developed 14 varieties of vaccine. Uh, uh, among which five are already in the third uh, phase three uh, clinic trial. And uh, in China, I think you know, uh, uh, the Chinese vaccines uh, uh, are the most effective because uh, uh, we have seen in the world there are about more about two two hundred vaccines. And uh, the, top, you know, the top leaders of many countries have asked for vaccination uh, with the Chinese vaccines. And China, so far as China is concerned, uh, we have divided the population into three groups. The first group is uh, from 18 to 59, uh, that is middle-aged uh, people. And uh, first we are going to vaccinate uh, these people. And uh, by the time of uh, March, that is after about two months, the group uh, between 3 and uh, 17 will be also vaccinated. Then, lastly, uh, it will be done for the aged people, that is uh, 60, uh, beyond 60. So, let's see, uh, I think uh, the Chinese vaccines, especially I would like to advise, you know, propose uh, uh, Chinese uh, Sinopharm. That vaccine is the most effective. And uh, I think uh, Pakistan has already cleared uh, to import or to get from China. Uh, I think China will, uh, is going to provide some free assistance to Pakistan. So how do you view the effectiveness of the COVID-19 vaccines? You know, mostly previously the vaccines, uh, there are many other diseases where the vaccines are being pro provided to the, to the, to the people. Um, those vaccines were being developed in like maybe five years of time span. So this is the world's fastest vaccine, which has been developed in uh, one, and one year of time. Uh, it is already in the third phase of uh, the, the clinical trial. Uh, in the world, there are nine 
leading vaccines right now. Out of those nine, five are from China. And among those five, two of them, they are leading in mm -hmm. China. So one is the Sino, um, that is, one is the Sinovac, uh, Sinovac and Sinopharm. So these vaccines are, uh, are very uh, already in the, in, the, in the third phase of the trial and they, they, it, it, it has already been started administrating to the people in China. To deal this pandemic, to control this pandemic, it's over a one year. So now we can't uh, live like this. We can't uh, uh, stay at home for forever, for long. So we need to open up. We need to, to go to the school, colleges. We need to open the trade. We need to do everything as normal as before. But for this, we need um, uh, a shield, a protective shield. What is the protective shield? So this uh, vaccine can provide a health protective shield to the people uh, around the globe, around the world. Mr. Tedros Adnam, he already said that uh, the, the vaccine should be like uh, evenly distributed to the world. Like it, it is not should be like um, for uh, for all people in one some countries. It should be like in all countries for some people, so that everybody can get the benefit of that. And um, for for Pakistan, this first order is one point. It's not that much. We need more because you know. For herd immunity, you need at least 58 to 90 percent of the people to be vaccinated. The Chinese government has uh, the the policy to develop the vaccine quickly. That they are doing, they have done a good research on that. They are doing that, and the second is they want to extend their helping hand to the world. So my personal experience is one of my friend is in in UK and one of my friend is in. In Middle East, there are my many friends, but these my two of these two friends, they they ask me to send us the Chinese vaccine. So I think they have other vaccines also, but they ask me to send me the Chinese. So I think uh, this is the confidence that we have on these vaccines uh, uh, and on China. Um, so I think uh, this uh, Mr. Iqbal was the first one, and there will be many more, uh, including me. So we'll be having this vaccine soon. Because uh, uh, now we have got not only uh, COVID-19, we have got new varieties of virus. So the Chinese vaccines in a while being developed, we have already paid attention to this point. So the Chinese vaccines uh, uh, is effective not only for COVID-19, but also effective for uh, other varieties of uh, virus. This is very important that for vaccine, it need uh, safety is important. So safe transportation is also very important. Yeah. So like Pfizer has the vaccine, and but they need uh, uh, ultra cold condition to transport. And the second thing is that, so in UK and South Africa, we have some new strains of the COVID-19 uh, and they are, uh, they are being, maybe they're, they're different. So how effective these vaccine can be. So the thing is that when the strain changes, so we, we, we think that the smallest part of the protein has been changed. So it's, it doesn't change the whole uh, virus. So for, for that point of view, these vaccines are equally effective for, for this uh, previous strain and for the new strain also. China considers the vaccines as a, a global public products. And uh, according to uh, the, United, uh, the United Nations uh, Health Organization, about 20% of the world's population will get uh, free uh, vaccination. And uh, I think China will make uh, great contributions uh, to, to, this, to this plan. So the Chinese uh, you know, enterprises, uh, actually they are not doing business. They are you know, looking after good health of the human beings. So the Chinese uh, government, because it's a, it's a kind of a strategic investment, it's investment by the government. So I think that China will make a great contribution to the free you know, vaccination for the human beings. I think 20% uh, that is the UN plan. I think China will, will have a big amount uh, for this. What is Pakistan's detailed plan of vaccination? Yeah, as I said earlier that mm -hmm. 
the front warrior should be the first, and they are the first. I mean, because the Pakistan government strategy is that the public health-related people, especially the doctors, mm -hmm. the paramedics, later on, uh, of course, uh, the people with the, um, dealing with the security, uh, the police and other uh, security agencies, and also the, uh, the teacher uh, uh, related to education, and uh, ultimately the common public. I think that um, quite uh, soon we will have the news that we will get s more vaccines also from China and yeah. maybe also from other countries. Mm -hmm. The rupee is getting stronger, the dollar is uh, devaluating. When they have more economic strength, so they are easy to buy the cars. Clothing export is, uh, has increased much, and uh, the environment for investment is improved. When you give them friendly environment, the development uh, starts. Then we had a lot of you know, foreign uh, uh, joint venture. And not only assembling, it bringing the technology transfer. Then it would be, it would be good for the Pakistan and also for, for the China. You are watching the Belt and Road face-to-face. -face. Let's enter the second part figure. According to figures released by the Pakistan Automotive Manufacturers Association, sales of automobiles rose 15% to 13,870 units in December 2020 compared to the same month of last year. During the first half of the current fiscal year, car sales jumped by 13.4% to 67,026 units, followed by 134% in jeeps, 32.4% in light commercial vehicles, 43% in farm tractors, and 19% in two- or three-wheelers. Said Fawad Bashir of Top Line Securities said demand for cars would grow stronger due to low interest rates environment and pickup in economic activities. What is the reason behind the increase of Pakistan's automobile industry, Mr. Chen? There is, you know, a good momentum uh, in Pakistan. Not only uh, there is a rise of uh, mobile, uh, automobile sales. Uh, in the past uh, about half a year, I think uh, Pakistan economic data shows uh, that uh, everything is going up. Uh, I think this is mainly because of the government uh, good decision and policies, uh, and uh, also in the textile and clothing export is, uh, has increased much and uh, the environment for investment is improved. The overall economic situation is uh, improving. Second is that uh, the government has good policies. And uh, the third is uh, the government has, already, has uh, always been encouraging you know, uh, export uh, of, of uh, commodities. I think these are the main three reasons. What is the current development of Pakistan's auto uh, manufacturing industry? So, well, the uh, current economic situation in Pakistan is, uh, is improving uh, over the years, especially after the China-Pakistan economic corridor. And um, we see recently the, the GDP um, uh, is, is rising, and even uh, during the COVID-19, uh, even the Prime Minister Imran Khan also quoted that the export in November uh, last year, last year just recently during the pandemic, uh, Pakistan was plus nine percent, and uh, it is uh, higher than our competitor countries like India, which was having shows minus, uh, and also. Bangladesh. So it shows that we have a good momentum in the economy. We have a very strong uh, uh, activity. Uh, it's, a, it's sort of a trade and industrial activities going on. So when there is um, industrial and trade activity start uh, momentum, so the, the people get the chance to, to have more economic strength. When they have more economic strength, so they are easy to buy the cars. Number two, because of COVID-19, there were a lot of lockdowns. 
in different parts of the country, not only in Pakistan, all over the world. So this also had the people that, uh, some people, if they were thinking that, okay, maybe we, we can survive without, without our personal car, so maybe we can use the public transport. But because of the, the lockdown, you know, it's uh, sometimes the public transport was not that often available. Mm -hmm. So that's why the people also, the, those who were thinking, so they also start. That was also one contribution. I think maybe small, but mm -hmm. yeah, yes, also, this also effect. And the, the third thing is that uh, the go current government has a very good policies for, for the industrial development. So when they say that uh, we want to bring friendly environment for the industrialists, for the importers, uh, for the exporters, and uh, this is very important. When you, when you give them friendly environment, the development uh, starts. Current government uh, has uh, very good textile policy. More agriculture activity, so more the tractor demand is uh, raising. And the other thing is the constructions and infrastructure development. With the CPAC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, we have a lot of uh, infrastructure uh, programs going on. So there are a lot of uh, big mega projects currently going on. So they also there is a demand of this kind of the vehicle, especially the, the tractors and uh, other uh, heavy vehicles. And also there was a policy by the current government. They provide a, a very good opportunity and open hand for the construction uh, construction industry. So that's why we see the construction industry has a very good rise and boom uh, recently in the in the last. Uh, one year, especially in pandemic, that's why the the the, the tractor sale is rising, um, and I think uh, it will be improving over uh, over and over, mm -hmm. um, as if the policies remain the same. The and uh, and in in my opinion, this is sustainable. It will be improving. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think uh, it's it's a good news for Pakistan. Hey, could be three reasons. The first reason is that uh, the overall economic situation is improving. Second is that uh, the government uh, has announced a uh, uh, tax cut. The third is uh, that uh, rupee is getting stronger and dollar is uh, devaluating. So this has boosted you know, uh, car sales. China's auto production and sales both have ranked first in the world for nine consecutive years. So what experience can China share with Pakistan? Actually, before you know, China opened up and uh, had economic reforms uh, in 1978, we did not have a real car industry. At that time, you know, we had only uh, red flag and liberation car, liberation vehicles mainly for the armed forces. And uh, so for the luxury uh, small cars, we mainly had uh, a red flag. This is, that, that is the history. Then, since 1978, uh, we uh, developed a car in, uh, vehicle industry, and uh, at that time we, we imported a lot of uh, production lines from uh, almost all the developed countries. I think Japan, uh, Germany, Fran France, America, uh, Britain. Then we had a lot of you know foreign uh, joint venture. Uh, initially, uh, I think uh, in indigenization was uh, very small, mainly imported. We imported you know, uh, production lines and we also imported uh, parts then assembled in China. But uh, uh, the second stage is that indigenization. Uh, I think this is, you know, can be for reference, uh, uh, can be a reference for Pakistan. The thing is that in Pakistan, uh, it's a, it, the demand for the car is like it's almost like one million per uh, uh, sort of yeah yeah it's almost like one million per year, but the production capacity is not that. So I think this is a very good opportunity for the Chinese um, Chinese producer to have joint venture in Pakistan and uh, not only assembling. It bringing the technology transfer, then it would be, it would be good for the Pakistan and also for for the China. Mm -hmm. So China will have another station. Chinese companies can have another production station that is in Pakistan, which is more near to bordering Iran, uh, of course, like uh, India and other countries. So we are bordering with Iran and Middle East. So from Gwadar, it will be easy. So I think it is a good opportunity for the. Chinese investors to invest in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And there is also a good opportunity for Pakistani investors to have joint ventures with Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. But for this, I think it is important to bring the technology transfer.
celebrities, they are also promoting, people promoting, and everybody is doing. Chemical products uh, is harmful to the skin. Yeah. And uh, Pakistan has a lot of uh, organic products. I think this has improved already. Before in 2018, it was 0.07%, but now it is 0.1%. Chinese Muslims have a lot of similarity with Pakistani people. You know, I think you can open up the Chinese market. They're watching the online platform uh, from different uh, online websites and different um, uh, vlogs. You are watching the Belt and Road face to face. Let's enter the third part culture. In the context of the official attractiveness economy, people's consumer demand for cosmetics is increasing in China. In 2020, China's imports of beauty cosmetics were 419,200 tons, with a yearly increase of 5%. The value of imports was 18.297 billion US dollars, increased by 28%. China has become the world's second largest consumer market for cosmetics, and online shopping of cosmetics has become a new consumer trend. The booming of China's cosmetic industry is closely related to the live e-commerce. So uh, how do you view these kind of new forms? We are in the new era of the internet and um, 5G. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a fast internet. And you see that because of this pandemic, um, the, the most of the trade was done online. It's, it brings a good opportunity also in, in terms as that we, uh, in, in the online marketing and sale, the trend has been improved a lot. So that's why the people, they are, uh, they are watching the online platform uh, from different uh, online websites and different um, uh, vlogs, celebrities, they are also promoting, people promoting, and everybody's doing. In China, you see that we have a huge population of the middle income uh, people that they, they can invest on the imported products also, and nationally uh, produced products also. So there is a lot of competition here. So that's why these influencers, uh, online influencers, they are they are having their share in the economy they they are they are promoting but also they have their businesses also so even in like um, mostly in pakistan also there are some fashion designers or some people who are in the in the uh, fashion industries they have their own brand name and they are producing the cosmetics and people are very interested to buy those so i think it's a it's a good thing that we have um, new platforms mm -hmm. mr Chen, what do you think of these new forms of marketing and what role can they play in the international trade we import a lot of uh, from south korea I think South Korea has a very good business in Chinese market and we have such a big population and I've got a lot, you know, gained a lot. And uh, as for the cooperation between China and Pakistan, I think, uh, uh, you know, Pakistan cosmetics uh, can be also exported uh, to China because China is a big market. You should, you know, study the possibility how to, about how to expand your business in China. Especially we have about uh, to crawl Muslims and the Muslims, Chinese Muslims have a lot of similarity with Pakistani people. You know, I think you can, you can open up uh, the Chinese market. So, could you introduce us some well known Pakistani cosmetic brands and products? Pakistan total uh, export, the if we see the total export and, and we compare the cosmetics export, it's very small. It's just like 0.1% of the mm -hmm. total export of Pakistan. I think this has improved already. Before in 2018, it was 0.07%. But now it is point 0.1, but we see that in the future it will be improving. Good brands, Lucius, Medora, uh, Christine, and there is um, Masarat Mizba, and there is some organic trend. So we have very good brands, mm -hmm. and uh, there are two advantages of this uh, mm -hmm. Pakistani products. Number one is that the, some of the brands are very good. They are using pure veggies mm -hmm. in that, so it's like a green. Second thing is that it is not that expensive. Uh, like if you compare the products that is a good quality product, 
uh, matching the European quality uh, is uh, produced in Pakistan. It's, it must be very cheaper as compared to that. And the third important thing is, I think, that is the, the tag of that, okay, if we use uh, the products that is uh, halal, I mean, in Pakistan, it's very, also very important for us. Mm -hmm. Because uh, now in the market, there are a lot of uh, products uh, uh, which is related to chemistry. So chemical products uh, is harmful to the skin. Yeah. And uh, Pakistan has a lot of uh, organic products. And that is you know, a kind of nutrition for the skin. Uh, so uh, th that's why I propose, you know, this one will buy Pakistani organic products. Yes. Yeah, if I have a chance, <laughs> I, I want to buy Pakistani. Yes, because of this China-Pakistan economic corridor and this kind of platform, I think future is very good for uh, China, Pakistani products to be sell in Pakistan and China. Maybe we see that the China is, um, the ex import is increasing every year, and especially the cosmetics. So we have a great potential. Currently, uh, we, we are exporting the cosmetics to majorly to Afghanistan, mm -hmm. to UAE, to Saudi Arabia, to Iran, to UK, USA, but there is uh, not much we are sending to, Pakistan, uh, to China. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, right now we have a good opportunity to sell our uh, good quality cosmetics to China. Mm -hmm. And China is a very huge market. It's mm -hmm. a 1.42 billion people here. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge market here. The only thing is we need our, uh, our investors, our traders, businessmen, they have to bring their products here. They have to target the market, the Chinese local market. And of course, they can have joint ventures with the Chinese companies also. That can also boost the trade between two countries, mm -hmm. uh, especially the cosmetics trade. So I think that th this is really very important uh, for the two countries, uh, that the traders, investor, and businessmen, they come together and they, they have to explore the new ways and, and new technologies how to bring to each other. And Pakistan can get the advantage of this um, big market. Uh, in, in my opinion, that the, the current government has the good policy that we see that this is that we have to give the ease of business to the international traders and exporters. That's why the export of Pakistan is increased and jumped, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is jumping. So I think in future, the cosmetic will be, cosmetics product will be the, the top, uh, one of the top product in mm -hmm. future mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to, to be exported to China. And when I was uh, in Pakistan, when I was in South Asia, and uh, actually many friends asked me to buy two products. One is uh, cosmetic products, uh, uh, another is uh, medicine. Because uh, uh, Pakistani, uh, Pakistan made medicine uh, is more effective than the Chinese uh, medicines. So many friends asked me to buy these two products, cosmetic products and medical products. And uh, quality and the price. Price is also uh, very they're reasonable. They're very reasonable. Right? You know, like for example, if you buy a, 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 a Medora lipstick, it's uh, if it is Pakistan. It's in uh, it's uh, the 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 company is in Swat. It's it's a hill area. It's yeah. a very beautiful north. Uh, I've north been there. You've been there. Yeah. yeah, it's a very beautiful place. So there is a company. There is a company named as Tibet. Uh, they are also producing. We call small Tibet. Yeah. So <laughs> they are producing. Uh, uh, the, the the company name is like they they are producing soap and they are producing. And uh, creams. along the streets there is uh, I saw. Natural, natural mineral water yes, running it's, it's along the streets. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a so you know they they producing very good quality of uh, uh, lipstick and mm -hmm. creams, and the price is very low. It's like almost sort of mm, Chinese, maybe almost less than ten RMB. And mm -hmm. if you buy the same quality of a, of a European brand or or American or Japanese brand, it must be like one hundred RMB. Mm -hmm. So the price is very low and the quality is same to the European brand. So I think uh, the only thing is we need to target the, uh, the market yeah. uh, effectively. Thank you for watching the Belt and Road face-to-face -face, and thank you too for coming to our show today. See you next time.